Hello, how y'all doing today? My name is Bernie Thompson and today we're here to look at a 2000 Ford F-250 with a 7.3 diesel engine in it. This diesel engine experiences low power and engine knock after you run it hard. Apparently when you first drive the car it runs fine and you run it really hard and we start to have a low power problem with the knock. So what I want to do is I first connected a scope and I've got some things connected to this vehicle before we go for a test drive. Let's take a look at what I've got connected. Here we're at the FICM. It's under the wheel well on the driver's side. I've got an amp clamp on the two power wires that power the eight injectors, and I've got the number one injector targeted. That will give me a reference for our waveforms. The yellow trace is channel one, and it's connected into the cam signal. There is no crank sensor on the 7.3, there's just a cam sensor. That will give me the sensor reference, which would be like a crank on most cars. Then is what I've added is a knock sensor on this engine. This knock sensor is gonna give me the indication if the cylinder fired or didn't fire, and it's gonna tell me which cylinder is knocking. Now that we've got this connected, let's go ahead and take this vehicle for a test drive. The first thing we need to do is go ahead and set up the oscilloscope for this Ford. On channel two, we have the amp clamp. So we're gonna pick the 20 amp clamp and we're gonna zero that out. We're gonna go ahead now and we're gonna to start to get some data. We're gonna start this car up and now it's running and we're gathering some data. The car feels like it's running fine. It doesn't feel like we have any miss or anything else. We're gonna stop the data capture. Now is what we want to do is we want to come in and we want to take a look at a couple of things. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move this trace down so it's easier to, for us to see what we want to look at here. So now I'm going to get the zoom window and we're going to come and we're going to zoom in. Now we're going to also turn off the knock sensor for right now. So this is the number one injector. So let's go ahead and just zoom on that right here. So the yellow trace is our cam signal. Now I want you to notice that I have an opening at the top and I'm closed during the indexing point. And on this indexing I'm high and then on this indexing I'm low. So this is one fire cycle and this is trigger to trigger. So I want to go get my triggers and basically I want to bring those over and we want to put those on my injector fire and I can see that injector fire down underneath there that's the current let me show you the red the red here is the is the amp clamp so this is the current going to fire each injector and we can see all the injectors are firing and they're all pulling about the same current now when I put these up do you see how those are in the troughs of each one of these that's the target point that the computer is programmed to fire these now one of the things I want you guys to be really careful of on these 7.3's the cam signal the magnetic intensity gets bad on these and it makes these fire in the wrong place so it will look like they're still in the troughs it looks right on the cam but the cam, where it mag made that magnetic change, and it changed the voltage, is now not in a relation to the engine. It's out of relation. And these engines will run really bad, and they can knock too. I've seen sides get shut down, so I'm really worried about the knock sensor, and it's really hard to see. So the way I'm gonna find that is I'm gonna put a grid down on these. Now the grid should hit every one of these injectors. Now when the grid doesn't hit the injectors, we have a problem. So we wanna go ahead and we wanna get eight on our, on our pick here. We wanna pick our firing order so we can mark this. And now we're going to mark it. We're on number one trigger. This is my firing order, so we're going to go ahead and mark this out now. Now we've got this marked, I want to turn the cam off. Do you see how that grid is marking the front of each one of these? When you start to have a problem with one of these, one of the things I'm really, I need to be really cautious of 
is these don't start to move and they're not on axis with the top dead center marks. If we take top dead to top dead and we do one firing cycle, all of these should be really close to the same target point. When the magnetic intensity is wrong, some of these will be over and they won't line up with the marks. Then I know my cam can be having a problem. So I'm just trying to show you why I'm connected to the things I'm connected to. So that's one of them I want to look at. The next one is I want to go ahead and I want to look at the cam signal. Now when we were looking through the cam signal, we want to make sure that it's clean and there's no lines that come up or down that the computer can count to get it out of sync. There's no noise on it. So this signal right now is good and the car is running good. So the next thing I want to do is I want to process the signal. So we want to shut off all of these and I just want channel one and it's what we're going to do is we're going to turn this frequency. So now we're going to turn this plot and we're going to turn it in to the crankshaft velocity changes. Now this is velocity change. So we'll bring that down and then we're going to take our zoom window and we're going to zoom in here. So now where we've marked this now we can see that the crank sped up right here. When this moves up, that's sped up, and when it drops, it's slowed down on top dead center. Then it's sped up and it's slowed down. Here we have indexing marks, so we can't really see three very well. But four, I can see that I sped up and slowed down, I sped up and slowed down, I sped up and slowed down, I sped up and slowed down. So all of these cylinders currently are firing and we can go down through here and we can sort of look at these and we can see that they're all pretty even and they're all working okay. Next I want to turn on my knock signal. Now this is the knock signal that's being generated so now we can come back over and we can take a look at these. So two has a little bit bigger knock four has a little bit bigger knock, six has a little bit bigger knock, and I can see the knock on one and seven and three, five, six. So some of these, six is, is an even bank, some of them are odd bank. The one that really looks like I've got something going on maybe right now is two. This is a lot bigger. But I don't really feel a problem right now and I do not hear a knock, so to speak. The engine sounds pretty normal. These engines have a knock because there's no pilot injection on these engines. So now is what we need to do is go drive the car now that we have the data. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and I want to save the data. So it's a 2000, so that's okay. It's a Ford. It's a Super Duty, it's a 7.3, it's automatic engine. Now is what I want to do is we want to just go through and we want to mark these out. So this is the cam. This is the injector for one. This is, oh, I'm sorry, that's not the injector for one. That's the injector amps. This is the knock sensor. And this is injector one. Now the other way I can do these, if I don't want to type them out, I can, we can actually go in over here and we can look at these and we can find what we're looking for. I'm going to go ahead and put that down. Fuel injector number one. So that's all marked in there too, whichever way. This is an unknown waveform right now because I'm not sure what's going on. I mean, right now what we see is good, but we'll leave that as unknown. But we could put known good, unknown, or bad. But right now it's unknown. And we're going to go ahead and save that data so we could recall that data after if we need to go back and we need to look at it. It's always good to save your data. 
So now that data has been saved, we want to go ahead and we want to start this. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go drive it. So let's take this thing on a test drive and see what we get. Okay, so we're on our test drive and the car's running relatively well. Um, I really don't feel anything wrong with it. It doesn't feel low powered or missing, but I haven't, I haven't really gotten in on it. And you got to really get into it, the shop says. You got to go wide open and you got to pull for a while before the problem happens. They say it feels like it's just running out of fuel. So we're going to get up here and we'll, uh, we'll get in a place where we can get into it and then we'll get some data from this thing. Got a lot of construction going on here, but we want to go ahead and we're going to load this thing. So the turbo spooled, it's pulling pretty good. It started to feel like it's nosing over. It started to misfire right there. Real light, but I can feel it. So we want to go up here. Yeah, it definitely has quite a loss of power right now. So what I want to do now is we want to take a look at the data. So let's stop this data. Let's take a look at the data. We're going to take our zoom window. We're going to come in and we're going to take a look at this. I want to go ahead and I want to lower my, my waveform. make it easier for us to see. Now I'm going to take my zoom window. We're going to come in here and zoom on this. We can see that this is the knock right here. We can see it's much larger than the rest of them. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to look at this cam signal. So we're going to turn all of this other stuff off for a second. And now we're going to come back through here and we want to just look at this. And what I want to make sure is there's no lines coming up that the computer could count as an edge. Usually if I've got a line in any kind of cam or crank that goes more than half a volt, I start to become worried. By a volt, I'm really worried about the noise. So here we've got a real clean signal and I definitely don't see an issue here. So this looks okay and the car is missing right now so I'm not worried about that so I want to go ahead and we want to turn on our targets and we can see our targets in here and once again these guys are sitting in the valleys right where they should sit and all of them are targeted so now is what we want to do is we want to go ahead and we want to take our blue trace turn it on and now we want to get the cursors and we want to take the cursor well we need to move the pan hand over here so we got fire cycle to fire cycle we're going to get the cursor and we're going to come put it on the injector and on the injector shut this off so we can better target the front edge so what i'm trying to do here is i'm trying to be right on that front edge of where the injector started now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and we want to mark this. We still have our firing order. One is the target. So now we can see that eight is the knock. So eight's the knock here. And you can clearly see that eight is the one that's got the problem. So number eight injector is the one that's leaking and that's what's causing the problem. So now what I want to do is I want to look at, I want to take this cam and we want to modify that waveform. I'm going to turn these off like we had, just one, and we're going to go ahead and mark this, and then we're going to bring this down. Get the zoom window right in here where we were just looking. And we can see that one fired. Do you see how one sped up? And then it slowed down, and then it slowed way down, and two missed. Seven fired, you see how the crank started to go faster? Now four fired, you see how it went faster and it came down? Five fired, six didn't fire. Now eight fired, do you see how eight came up? Let's turn this off. Do you see how eight came up? But eight has a problem there. So eight sorta 
slowed down because of the leak, the crank actually slowed down more than it should have, and then over here, it started to rise. Do you see how this guy fired close to top dead center and accelerated? Do you see how that didn't happen over here? We're gonna turn this off again. Do you see how the crank didn't fire right away? See how this one sped up? And do you see how this one sped up right away? Do you see how the crank slowed down and then it went? That's because that injector is leaking fuel into the cylinder. And when it leaks fuel into the cylinder, it knocks. Now the one thing you guys got to remember with a diesel, you don't pre-ignite fuel because there's no fuel in the cylinder. The only way you can get pre-ignition is if you get fuel in the cylinder. The point of ignition is the point where the injector opens and I start to burn the fuel and then I have combustion phase on a diesel. Well this has got early combustion because I've got that injector starts to leak. When you put these under heavy power, the injector tip is getting very hot and it stops seeding and I have a little bit of diesel getting into the combustion chamber. Now when the piston comes up, the majority of your force or the pressure is made in the last 30 degrees of rotation. So you still don't have enough heat to fire the fuel on its own until the compression builds high enough. That means it's almost going to be at top dead center, but it's going to pre-ignite early, and that's what we're seeing here. We're seeing the pre-ignition point happen early, and we're seeing the knock happening on eight. So the problem with this is the number eight injector is bad. Now, when the, apparently they tell me when this runs for a bit and the tips cool back down, it'll start running fine. But it's still, it started to run a little bit better just since we've been sitting here looking at this waveform. But this is a problem and we can see where each one of these, do you see how I get a rise and I get a rise and a rise and a rise and a rise and a rise? I'm firing the fuel and I can tell if a cylinder fired or not by using my ATS knock sensor. So this guy right here, this is my problem. Again, we have our firing order count out. Eight's the bad injector. So the shop is going to need to look at these injectors, but the injector's causing the problem and that's what's gonna need to be replaced. Whether they're gonna replace the whole set or not, I don't know, but eight's the injector that we're really worried about. That's the one that's causing the problem. So let's go ahead and go back to the shop now. Okay, we're back at the shop and I wanna show you a couple of other things that we get with this waveform. So one of the things is, is when we're looking at this, this is the number one injector to number one injector. So this is the number one fire. Do you see how it increased? Now two is missing and we've got a miss on four as well. And so we also got a low fire on six and eight fires, but it comes up after it's leaked. Now the reason that you have two, four, and six misfiring is because eight is leaking. Now when eight leaks, the combustion gas and the high pressure is forced back into the injector and if that gets into the fuel rail. So these are being aerated by this leaking injector. That's why you see one bank missing, but eight fires still. But eight's firing, but the knock is coming from the number eight because it didn't seal correctly once we got it hot. That's why you see the even numbers, two, four, six miss, and eight would have missed probably, but he's causing these others to miss because he's putting high pressure gases back into the rail and diesels don't like air in the system. So if air gets into the system, you'll have a bank go down like this. So that's sort of the way that it works. The knock sensor, I've been using this for a long time, guys, and on these diesels, it's a really powerful tool because I can also zoom in and I can look at these others to see if one of them might not have fired or if I've got a knock like this. So we're gonna turn this truck back over to the shop and 
hopefully you guys can start to use some of the technology like the crank velocity changes and the knock sensor and you'll have good troubleshooting in your base.